Well, we're back. Um, we're going to kick it off with a few questions from the audience. Uh, the first one, you might have guessed, is about motor patterns. Um, if motor patterns determine a dog's responses are innate, why is it then that working dogs, like livestock guardians, for example, need guidance and supervision initially to fulfill their roles? Otherwise, why couldn't we just put them out into the, you know, into the field and not worry about losses or maulings? Uh, I think it's a good question, and uh, I didn't have time to go into it, but it's very important in what kind of environment you raise that livestock garden dog is. Dogs make their social attachment somewhere between two and a half, three weeks, and about eight weeks old. And so if you want the dog to be attentive to sheep, it's got to be with sheep at that period of time. So I either like to have my dog born in the sheep pen, or if I am going to go and buy dogs from somebody else, I'll actually go and take a sheepskin and put it in with a puppy's think nose, all right, or put it in with a puppy's, and I'll actually go and dump sheep urine on them or, or whatever, you know, put the, the, other, the little beady things, put those in a pen and, uh, or whatever. So it's important for a number of reasons. So one is that um, you want them to be attentive to sheep when they grow up. You want them to be trustworthy with sheep when they grow up grow up, and so um, there's, oh God, that's such an interesting subject because lots of my farmers uh, like the dog to have a little chase, but when it was socialized with sheep, it wouldn't chase sheep. They won't chase the animal that they've socialized with. So, but they would chase deer and they would chase other things. So lots of the farmers who thought that deer were competitive for rangeland with uh, whatever, would, uh, would like a dog with a little chase. You socialize it properly and let it chase it up. Other, other farmers uh, didn't like that at all because um, you socialize it with sheep, uh, but they weren't making any money off the sheep, they were making money off their hunting rights. And, um, and so if the, uh, th this is on federal lands and stuff like that, you have a, uh, uh, a management plan. You have to have so many sheep out there in order to have the land, but you're making your money off uh, r renting the land to hunters to kill livestock. So they didn't want chase in the dog. They would, uh, and so you'd socialize it with sheep and it grow up and it wouldn't chase others. Did that do it? There we go. We'll just trade back and forth. A um, uh, theme that's come up from a few different people um, that are watching and in the audience um, have asked, are some dogs' motor patterns so rewarding that we can't change it by higher value rewards because they just don't exist? So I guess is there a stronger reinforcer than completing a motor pattern? Um, you, you've got into dog training uh, jargon here and I don't know the answer to it. The, um, uh, the, the whole idea of reinforcers or, or <laughs> I could say when you repeat the question. I, I don't understand that vocabulary. I really don't know anything about training a dog. I think that just if the, um, so we've talked about motor patterns, uh, I guess people perceive that as being so rewarding to the dog. Yeah. How do we change their behavior if the motor pattern is not something we want them to be doing? Uh, um, first, get another dog. Um, and then, but you could all, you manage it. You know, the fact is, what is the chief uh, way for a border collie in this country to die is chasing cars. They're terrible at chasing cars, you know, and you can't stop them from chasing cars, but I certainly can manage the dog such that he doesn't chase cars. I certainly manage the, 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 uh, Ch the Chesapeake's, you know, from porcupines. Uh, it just, it's a management problem. And that's basically what your dog trainers do. You go, you go and somebody's got the problem. And you can't change the dog, but you can teach the people how to manage that dog. So, yeah. um, Kind of switching notes a little bit, somebody was interested in what's your opinion about a, a, a somewhat popular practice of euthanizing puppies with some genetic problems? Oh, I am a firm believer in culling. Um, you, don't, you don't need me to expand on that. 
someone else has asked, what's your opinion on the popular practice of medicating dogs as a first approach to behaviour problems? Oh, that's horrible. That's ter terrible. I, I was at a conference and, uh, and there were lots of veterinarians there and, and they have behavior problem and so they should try this, try that, give them drugs. And so you bring up another behavior and they say, try this, try that. And so what do you want? You, know, you want a dog that you call a pet or something like that and you're gonna drug it all the time? Just give me a break. Just get another dog. So we, we'll, we'll bring a lot of this back into the panel tonight, uh, which I you bet. guys will be. <laughs> Which you guys will be a part of too. And um, just to touch on your, your uh, second edition of the Fishing Dog book is out now. Um, why is that your favorite book of all the things that you've written, which you've written so much? Because it's a spoof on all you people that uh, <laughs> have pet dogs. It was just, you know, years of talking to audiences and so forth. I, I, I needed a I needed to have a, a breeding programs and stuff like that, which you would um, identify with. There's, there's great dogs. You know, you're all out there having trouble with your breeds of dogs with genetic problems. And so it has a little section in there that I was hoping that Prescott would use when he showed you the flounder up here. You know, there's a dog that used to lie around on the lawns of Louisiana so long, you know, and just lie there, you know, and so on. Finally, the eye got sick of looking into the ground, so it migrated up through the other side of its head, so that, you know, we call it flounder hounder, and they, they have <laughs> both eyes on the same side of the head. But, but there's, there's genetic problems with, as you can imagine, and those dogs, those dogs end up with migrating headaches. That's why it's my favorite. <laughs> it's probably a good point to um, just put out a reminder that Dogwise Publishing are offering a 25% discount on all books associated with our speakers at this conference. Um, we'll be taking a short break um, just after one final announcement, but the broadcast will be leaving us now and we'll be resuming a little bit later than scheduled just so that you guys can have a break. Um, and we will come back with Sam Gosling giving us an overview of the research of personality and temperament in dogs at 12.15. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, yeah, Thank you. that was fun. Yeah. If you guys can just wait, we've just